All right, so now we're the installer. Now we've received our file from the programmer, and we're ready to go ahead and transfer that file to our master on site. But before we do that, there's two things that we need to do. The first thing we need to do is we need to connect to our master because we're not going to be able to transfer anything until we connect to our master. So to do that, we need to go to settings and go to master communication settings. And this is going to help connect Netlink Studio to the master that we're wanting to do. So if we go to Netlink's communication settings and then we click on communication settings, and now that we're here in the communication settings, we need to tell it how we're going to connect to the Netlinks master. There's several different ways that we can do that. We can connect using a virtual Netlinks master, and that's basically using my computer, pretending it's a master. There's some various reasons why you'd want to do that. You can connect over serial. This is if you are connecting directly to your master using the serial port, or we can do TCP IP. So basically, this means that your master is somewhere part of the network, and you're connecting to it over the network, which is what we're going to do. And then if you go to your edit settings, then now we can actually go in and connect to our master over the network. Now, if you know your IP address, you can go ahead and enter your IP address and connect to it that way. But if you don't, you can actually just do listen. And if you click on start listening, that's going to listen to your local network and find your master. Now, your master is going to need to be on the same subnet. Basically, they need to be connected to the same router. And then you'll see my master showed up here. So I'm going to select my master and then click select add. And then it's going to add there. I can add a description if I want to name it. And I can do OK. Now I can see my master appears in my list of IP addresses that I can connect to. And I'm going to do OK. And OK. And OK. All right, so now we see our IP address here, but we're not seeing it as connected. So if you want to see it as connected, right now it's showing our connection is off here on the left. But if I click on this, it's going to connect to the master to make sure that we're connected. And now it's showing green. So that basically means that our master is talking to Netlink Studio. So now we're connected. The other thing we need to do before we transfer our files is we need to map our files to our devices. This is a process called device mapping. And essentially what we're doing is we are telling Netlink Studio where to send the various devices in our system. Our user interface file, we want this to go to our touch panel. Now, if you see in our code, our programmer has added a device, DVTP. And so that's a touch panel file. And that touch panel file is now part of our system. And because the device is defined in our code, we can now map to this address. If the device isn't defined under defined device, it won't show up in our device listing. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and do device mapping. Now we can see DVTP is in our device list. Now we need to select the file that we're wanting to transfer, in this case our user interface file, and then we're selecting the device we want to transfer it to, and then we click Map. And basically now we see that this user interface file has been mapped to DVTP. And we can do OK. So now Netlink Studio knows where to send our touch panel file. And so now we're ready to go. Everything's ready to go ahead and publish. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to compile our system and file transfer.